Good morning. Good morning. If we had a title for the message this morning, it would be called Old Testament Prophecy. You know what prophecy is? It foretells things to come. Amen? It foretells things to come. Glory be to God. The Old Testament is full of prophecies about the coming of Jesus that were written 600, 800, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 years before Jesus was born. That's pretty heavy, isn't it? The coming of Jesus. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day. And Father, we thank you for all that you're doing, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the finances to pay the bills here, Lord. And Father, we thank you that the Holy Spirit is here and in us, Lord. And Father, we pray over this city. We ask you to put a hedge of protection around this city, Lord, because of that hurricane coming, Lord, and from the tariffs that seem to be our enemy, Lord. And Father, we just ask you to protect the United States, protect Jacksonville, Florida, Lord. And we commit this service, this church, into your hands. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Prophecy, ladies and gentlemen, is a blessing. Amen? Amen. Prophecy is a, a blessing. Hallelujah. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. For the time is near. Revelation 1, 3. Also, keep in mind about Revelation 22, 19. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from what? The book of life. From the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Amen? And you better be careful, glory be to God. You better not mock the word of God. You better not make fun. You better not take words away and add words to the books of this Bible. Amen? Amen. Revelation is the only book that offers a divine blessing to those that read, hear, and keep its word. Amen? Amen. Amen? Are you keeping his word? Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Amen. Amen? You will love the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength, and you'll love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. Sometimes your neighbors aren't very nice. I wish we could get our neighbors to come to church, glory be to God, to hear the word of God, to be set free, hallelujah, because they're in bondage. They say, how are we in bondage? We're not a slave to anybody. You're a slave to sin, amen? You are a slave to sin, and you need to be set free, glory. Prophecy influences lives, doesn't it? The value of prophecy is its ability to influence a person's present action, hallelujah, by both promise of blessings and also by threat of impending judgment. Like Benny said, you don't go around and say, Lord bless me. I have a lot of churches that say, oh bless me. That's all it's about. It's bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me more and more. You know what I pray here? I say, bless the ministry, glory be to God, so the people here can be blessed. Amen? Amen. I say, thank you, Lord. We've got enough. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you've given us. Hallelujah. The fulfillment of prophecy glorifies God, vindicates prophet, and motivation us, motivates us towards holy, moral, and ethical behavior. Amen? Amen? Prophecy also testifies to God's wisdom and sovereignty over everything in the universe, including time and the future. Amen? Amen. Talk about the future of the church. What is the future of the glorious church of Jesus Christ? We know what it is. Amen? We've read the whole Bible. We've read the end of it. Glory be to God. We know that the Christians are going to be taken out of here. Amen. We know that we're going to heaven. We know there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Amen. We know that Jesus is going to come back. And he's going to be the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. We know that by the word of God. Prophecy begins with mankind's fall. Did you know that? That's where it began. In the beginning, mankind possessed holiness. The sinless Adam and Eve walked and talked freely with God in this garden. Amen. Amen. I believe back then that God intended them for them to live forever. Praise the Lord. A sinless life. But it didn't last very long, did it? Right. Genesis 1.26, verse 28. 
that God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. Praise God. I want to stop there. God is not a monkey or an ape. God created us in his image. Amen. Amen. God created us in his image. Hallelujah. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God. He created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Well, with the fall some 6,000 years ago, everlasting life in direct communion with God was lost, wasn't it? Completely lost because of, of what? Disobedience. Oh, the people of God were disobedient. Even the Israelites, they were disobedient. God even killed many, many Hebrews because of what? Disobedience. And aren't we living a life today of, of disobedience? A lot of us? Praise God. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Man, uh, these people that say, well, I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay with the bad upstairs. Everything's just fine. I don't sin. Well, like I've said before, you just lied. You just lied. 